we'll start off again, just a, a briefly your sort of individual journeys uh, of education and um, aspiration. What got you from there to here? What got you started? Um, do you want to start? Thank you. <laughs> Katie started. Um, well, we both started in theatre originally, uh, and then we met at the BBC, um, and then we trained at circus school together. Sarah, no. Uh, <laughs> circus so school is perfect for this yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah. You had us on that. That um, zoology. Yeah, then zoology. Um, uh, but I think what, what, what certainly what I loved, I, I loved, uh, we didn't have as many TV channels uh, in England when we were growing up and we just used to show the old movies and it was the old movies that were really a great inspiration and that was, that's what I loved really and that got me into theatre and then theatre became repeating the same thing every day so it was lovely to go and uh, do TV and film where I met Sarah. So uh, it, it seems that you had a fairly decent budget for this one and... Um, <laughs> it was a Disney movie. It was Disney, though. That's right. Um, but these were all built sets, and it was just amazing. So um, how did you decide which ones you, you needed? Were they all scripted, or did you... This was your first collaboration with Bill Condon, and your first musical, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. And how did you develop exactly what you needed based on... The, the magnitude of what yeah. <laughs> what um, this was I mean it was a certainly was a was a kind of massive massive undertaking and if you if you it's like any project if you stop and think and you think you think about the whole you would just wilt you know <laughs> yes. so so you know it was it was a it was a kind of small and slow start and the great thing was uh, Katie and myself and a couple of illustrators um, so we had time to kind of kind of ramp up and get going the interesting thing was we were also covering the characters you know, the design of um, all the household stuff, and that was a real departure for us, mm -hmm. and the musical side of things. You know, the musical side of things kind of kicked in later when suddenly things had to fit the music, and, mm -hmm. you know, and so you suggest, say, oh, we could do this, and Bill would say, well, can we do that in three bars? And it's like, well, what are three bars? <laughs> Design-wise, what's three bars? Well, we know what three bars are, but... <laughs> yes, anyway. Um, so those yeah, bars Those kind know. of bars, yeah. So that was, that was an interesting and challenging <laughs> thing. I mean, it's the, the scale of it was enormous, but, you know, um, and, and, you know, the, the, it was Disney's baby that we were handling, but we were also taking something that was very loved, you know, and known, the animation, into live action. And one of the big things for us was that it's, it, you know, we knew that the, the household staff would be animated in CG, and we knew that the Beast, well, that's the, how it ended up with the Beast also. Um, so the sets were real. They had to be real, because mm -hmm. if everything was kind of created, it would not have been a live-action film. Yeah. Um, and, and what I, I particularly loved in the end, you know, is that you, you end up with... Um, you end up with this combination of such old school skills, you know, these amazing sets, this incredible craftsmanship, you know, our, you know, our draftsmen, you know, going back to pencil with a lot of the, you know, the drawing with the, you know, and... The Rococo uh, stuff. The Rococo is, stuff, yeah. 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 Uh, which is another story. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, so, so, you know, and then an incredible artisans that we worked with, you know, so the modelers, the sculptors, but then the blacksmiths and all of that, you know, so, so it was incredible kind of bringing together of kind of cutting edge technology with all the kind of creature development and critter development and old school. Um, yes, we did spend a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my principal question really is, what is the beauty part and what is the beast part of the making of this film for you guys? This is quite beasty, isn't it? And, um, <laughs> this is beastly, uh, yeah. <laughs> this lovely. Uh, I think it was, I mean, we had, I think, we had such extraordinary teams. I think that was a huge thing. And for me, I'd never ever sort of, as a decorator, sort of manufactured and made so much stuff. I mean, everything, everything was made virtually. And the little Cogsworth and Lumiere and all of that was just having that opportunity. craftsmanship. Though. Yeah, it was just brilliant. But really. also, I mean, it's very interesting, you know, so you could, you know, the, there was a major part of the story was the, you know, the whole the backstory that it started off was like inside a musical box and inside and inside it was kind of like a kind of Russian doll kind of thing and then you know and to the most enormous you know 
obviously 28,000 square foot back lot set for the village. You know, so it was just extremes. It was, uh, and every every single thing was created. So it's, it's interesting you say there's a lot of money, but there's never enough money. So at one point, because <laughs> Bell leads this sheltered life, we were going to, it was the idea that she was going to go to a World's Fair that was traveling so she could see everything, but we, we couldn't afford that. So even though it was Disney, it was like, oh, I know, we'll, we said we'll put them all into music boxes. So all the music boxes that uh, Maurice made were all of different countries around the world. So that wasn't that cheap, but it was certainly cheaper than doing a World's Fair. So I have to ask, because of our, from our pers decorating perspective, the chandeliers, and what you were telling me about, you actually crafted the clock and the candlesticks. How... I mean, again, the craftsmanship was just amazing. I mean, we have, I think in, in the UK, we have extraordinary, you know, craftsmen there. Um, the chandeliers were something which um, were based on the chandeliers at Versailles, but they were nothing big as... stated there. <laughs> it was like nothing... They were as big as a London bus, and uh, I was just saying to Shane that they've, they've, each crystal was as big as a shoe, so when you saw them in its different components, they, you know, looked terrible. But it was, um, <laughs> but hopefully they look fine when they're all together. Um, yeah. They look pretty amazing. Yeah. And then so about the characters, we, you know, the yeah. clock and the, yeah. we started on those early days with Bill. Can I have one more question? Quick question. Would you ever do another musical? Yeah, I loved it. I, I really loved it. And in three bars. It, yeah, <laughs> completely. You know, uh, as you're saying, a lot of it's in camera because you have live performances that you're capturing real space. But you also have sort of have to be thinking about the set extensions of which, obviously, where does the real world stop and the 3D world begin, or the 2D world begin? It's and then then communicating that back and forth with your animation units and your visual effects units. How did you manage all that workflow of information and, con and conceptualization? Mm. Um, I mean, con conceptualization, well, we, we, we created a lot of artwork. We, mm -hmm. you know, we did over like 100 illustrations and three kind of key illustrators, and one of them is based here, Joanna Bush, and um, you know, they each had their particular style and it was brilliant. So we had a lot of visual reference. We knew what everything looked like. We drew it all and everything. I mean, the actual kind of logistics of the kind of the crossover is still something I feel is not resolved as far as productions and producers and, you know, that, that we were working with Framestore in London and it was a very, very good relationship. We were going in, say, once a week in post for a couple of months, but not enough. You know, there isn't enough kind of uh, crossover mm -hmm. um, allowed for. You know, it's not that there isn't the will. There's just the no, of course. finance, which is just crazy when you think about, you know, you have to pay an art. One art director would answer a thousand questions a week instead of them having to rummage through our archives trying to find what it is they think they look, they're look they looking for. So I think that's something that still needs, you know, from my opinion. It's well, you made it look easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time ago. <laughs> Shall we? Thank you. Thank you. Can we queue up Blade Runner, please?